Oh shit, that's over there. Because he got the suit. Evening everybody. You have to apologise us being, uh, as per usual, completely, uh, well actually, we weren't disorganised this time, were we Kath? Not entirely disorganised. We got another cloth, sorry. We had a bit of a beer accident. We nearly had another. Taking some beers out of the fridge for tonight's live stream. And uh, I had four of them in my hand. And actually I think there's, oh there is, isn't there? There's some, <laughs> there's some beer on the lens. <laughs> oh, amazing. Oh, let's see. We're just mopping up beer. There's beer everywhere. Yeah, it looks like the, the beer cans were super cold and I accidentally dropped one on the corner of the desk there and it split down the side and it just went everywhere. So we're in cleanup mood right now. Well, I say we, mostly calf, but I am doing what I can. Oh God, there goes the glasses. Incredible. Oh, and my screen. My f oh, it's all going wrong. Well, it says on green in the stream there. This thing's hung. Oh, yeah, it's kind of working. Awesome. Okay. Everything. This place is going to smell like a brewery tomorrow. Right, I think that is everything, apart from finishing the rest of this. Well, if you join the stream for tech news, good luck with that. Uh, let's put my pop out chat and see what's going on. Okay, so that's working. Excellent, something is actually working. I don't know about that lens. Can you see it, Calf? On the front of the lens, there's a load of beer. I don't know if you can see it on the screen. Does it seem to actually be having a negative effect from what I can see? But there is definitely, actually, I'll switch to the other camera. There you go. Can you see that? There's definitely beer on the lens. Coors Light for a new generation or something like that. Anyway, I digress. I do apologise, I'm going to have to start sorting out all this crap. Doing my bit to help recycling. I turned what was once a drinks container into recyclable metal. Kind of. Uh, right, what else is in the way in this? Damn. Oh, there, beer is covering everything. Including my new disco ball. Got my new disco ball, which I don't even know if you can see it. Can you see it? Yes, you can. There is the disco ball. Now, the theory is when a super chat comes in, that disco ball lights up in flashes for about 30 seconds. So I know that I've had a super chat. So I know to look at the super chat to see who sent me a super chat and to answer that super chat. Or something along those lines. Okay, so this week, what we've been doing. So videos this week, we have had a flat tire with a BMW, or at least we haven't. We've had a flat tire warning which was relatively straightforward, eradicated, job done. That was a really simple video. Well, actually it wasn't a simple video, it was a pain in the butt because I had to use my crappy old Huawei P10 Lite, which actually I am taking the SIM card out of because we're moving over to the Nokia 8, everybody. Moving up in the world and getting rid of the Huawei phone. 
because it's been driving me mad. It has done for a long time. And after making the video in the car, yeah, granted it was low light, but the video was awful. It looked terrible. So I've done what I can with the Wowie P10 Lite. I've given it a good, probably a good 12 months actually of use to see if I can get actually get to use it and use it properly. But it's uh, starting to show signs of age and it's done my head in. So I'm gonna take the SIM card out right away. There we go. You're dead to me. Well, that's got beer in it as well. So let's put this in. Now this phone actually, my Nokia 8, I picked up, those of you that remember, I bought this cheap. Now I thought it was cheap at 50 pounds because it had a cracked screen. And I bought a new screen off eBay, which arrived today. I fitted and it actually works. It was a little bit tricky getting it to sit in because I got rid of all the glue. So unfortunately it doesn't sit in there particularly nice, but I've added some new glue and we're all good. And this phone is sticky because it's covered with beer. And what's everyone drinking tonight? Josh Wells, good evening. What are you drinking tonight, Josh Wells? Or are you uh, a minor and not allowed to drink? Of course, you don't have to have drink to have a good time. I'm sure somebody sang a song about that. I don't know. Josh Wells on beer, yes. Well, I'm on sort of beer, Coors Light, which I've already drank one, well, kind of half of one, because most of it ended up on the floor. So there we go, there is our Nokia 8 in full working condition with my SIM card in, which doesn't seem to have recognized right yet. Or has it? Yeah, it has, cool. We're rocking that. Steve Bradshaw, these are on my Xmas list. What, drinking beer? Or Coors Lights. Or Coors Lights. Or I-10. Yeah, or the I-10. Is that I-10? No, that's I-9. I-10. Oh, they're covered in beer as well. Sorry, for those of you that are joining, we had a bit of a beer accident and it went kind of everywhere, which wasn't great because we had all the kind of stuff props and what have you laid out on the table. So everything's got a bit wrecked. Which is a shame because some of these are Christmas presents. But such is life. Josh Wells, I'm either drunk or in love with my 1080 Ti. There's not really a lot I can say to that. But maybe you should try and get out a little bit more. Mind you, I said that. I went into a bank this week, believe it or not, an actual banking establishment. I had to leave the house. I know, it's unheard of. Left the house, went into a bank, and I thought I just walked into the Hilton. It was ridiculous. Banks are like hotel foyers now. It's insane. They've got like plush stuff and wooden strips and massive TVs. Like, there's like a 65 inch TV just showing an advert next to another one showing another advert. It's like, Really? And they even had a ribbon across it to make it look like a Christmas present. What dicks? Unbelievable. Anyway, so I'm digressing again, aren't I? So the P10 light is uh, finally gonna be going, which, where's the box? And oh, there's a box. So we'll be sticking that on eBay or something very similar very shortly. And actually, I don't think there's anything else on here that I need to keep, is there? Right, power off. You're dead to me. So what else did we do this week? So, oh, the Zotac. We did the Zotac, the uh, Zbox ER5 1060, which is a little gaming PC, which is actually a really little gaming PC. And was actually, I was massively surprised. I thought, to be honest with you, it was gonna be crap. But it turned out, actually, not at all crap. It was very small, it was very power efficient, and it was very powerful. Ryzen 5, 1400, 1400, four cores, eight threads, 3.2 gigahertz or 3.4 turbo. Plus you could overclock it, but the motherboard won't allow it, so we couldn't. That was the downside of that one. It was the, uh, a, a Zotac motherboard, which Zotac, in fact, actually used to do motherboards years and years ago, but they don't know more. So, uh, uh, there we go, that was it. Oh, cat fur. Power your play. 
with the Magnus ER5 1060. Seriously, look, look how small that is. The box is actually massive compared to what's inside it. The PC is tiny. So definitely worth a look if you're interested in tiny PCs. Oh man, <laughs> so much hair. Have you guys got cats or dogs? Because it's winter over here, so technically the cats shouldn't be molting, but they are and it's going everywhere. And I'll get it out of my nose. Oh dear. Right, uh, so what else do we get? Oh, CSGO, what is going on with CSGO? CSGO is now free to play. What is going on with that? Counter-Strike has always been a game you play, well, not always, I suppose. The beta editions were kind of free-ish. But in the last 10 years or so, Counter-Strike's been a paid-for game. That has been Valve's bread and butter, really. And to let it go free, and then to give away the weird deathmatch kind of thing, Danger Zone, what is all that about? I did a live stream of it, of Danger Zone, and I don't, I don't get it. I really don't get it. The whole point of Counter-Strike was it was fast, it was furious, and it was quite a quick turnaround. So if you did get killed within the first kind of 60 seconds, you maybe only had to wait another two or three minutes to get back in the game, which kept you engaged. And also it made you kind of hone your reflexes. But now they've got this weird deathmatch thing. So I, I went onto a map and I stayed on there, literally just hiding till the end. And it was thanks to two players, me and this other guy. And I just hid all the way through. It was so, so boring for everybody concerned, including me. But I didn't as a kind of proof of concept. But essentially, you don't have to be any good at the game to finish in the top two or top three. You just have to hide the entire map. And everyone else was waiting kind of 10 minutes or however long the map was. It was awful. Why have they done it? I know you've got Fortnite, um, Ring of Elysium, PUBG, all those kind of games. But do you really have to copy that formula, which isn't really a great formula? I don't know. It really annoys me. I don't like it at all. I really don't. Uh, what else? Oh, glider gloves. We had a look at some glider gloves this week. So if you've got a mobile phone, now in a moment in the UK, today particularly was in freezing, very, very cold. And I went out today with my glider gloves on. My hands were nice and warm. My body was freezing, but my hands were super toasty, which was really nice. Where did I put them? I don't even know where. Oh, they're up there. Calf, they're up there. I can't do it, can't get up. Just something else I failed to do today. Hello, MB. There we go, here's what we had this week, glider gloves. Now these are gloves which you can still use with your mobile phone. So they got copper strands woven into the fabric, so they still work like your normal fingers. The fingerprint doesn't work for obvious reasons because your fingerprint is kind of there. But other than that, these gloves are the bomb. Totally worth it. And come in various sizes. They do an urban one, a winter one. The urban one is kind of like a little bit thinner so you can wear it all year round, which is really nice. But these are really, really, really good. Keep you warm, not very expensive. Check them out, glidergloves.com. Yeah, glidergloves.com, check them out, worth doing, especially if you're starting to freeze like I am. Anyway, that is those. Not sure whether to go for it. Mike, I was considering getting the SteelSeries Apex M75T, I don't even know what that is. SteelSeries Apex m that's a mouse, isn't it? That's the RGB mouse, the weighted one, I think. Not entirely sure. Get it, what the hell, it's Christmas, treat yourself. All right, calf. She's like, <laughs> hmm. ah. <sighs> beer. Got to get my beer tolerances up because Christmas is coming, so you've got to try and take on more. So when it comes down to like the proper sessions, you can actually last it without just passing out and puking. Very odd, very odd. Uh, so what, what other videos did we do this week? Oh, v Vpon. Have you guys tried Vpon? I know it sounds like a weird kind of like, maybe like a weird tampon or something, but Vpon is a way of saving money. Now, all of you, actually saying that, Josh Wells, Josh Wells, you're gonna try and save some money. Try and see if that mouse is available or keyboard, whichever it is, I'm not sure. 
have a look on vpon, vipon.com and see if it's actually on any discounts for Amazon. Vpon is a discount site, so you get 50% or more off of stuff on Amazon. And it's like kind of wish, a place like that. So some of it is a little cheap tat, which is all right for presents and stuff like that. Or if you're like, well, I don't know if I want one, but it's half price, so I'm going to buy one. Definitely worth doing. And Kath is just showing me out of the corner of my eye the Apex keyboard. I got a feeling, I'm not sure if George is listening at the moment. George is my son. I'm pretty sure that is, is that the same keyboard as George has got? I'm sure he's got a Steel Series. Yeah, that one's not covered in vape juice, so it's probably a lot nicer. But that's nice. Josh Wells looks that wouldn't let you sign up. It wouldn't let you sign up. Just use your Google account. That's what I did. Nice and easy. Kath uses her Facebook account, I use a YouTube account. We both use it. I post deals actually. Well, I say that. Kath posts deals it all day, every day. If you go to um, ShopSmart on Facebook, join the group, any cool deals, Kath will notify you on there. So definitely, definitely worth keeping, uh, keeping in touch with that. Or what is it they say when you're in a social media thing? Keep in. I don't know. You get notifications anyway. Uh, what else? Oh, Lumix. We did some stuff for the Lumix camera. The, in fact, the camera that you are seeing me with currently, which I think is not straight. I don't know. So over that, we've had too many beers already, but that doesn't look straight to me. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. What the hell? I'll just if I move across that way a little bit. That's better. No, that's fine. So Lumix G7 cameras, if you've ever used one, they're really cool, but like in this situation here, because there's not a particularly wide lens, although it is probably one of the widest lenses you can get, it's a 12 mil lens, and it currently is set at 12 mil. It's probably what, three and a half, four foot away from me, so kind of more than an arm stretch away. So trying to see the actual flippy out screen to see what the heck is going on is essentially impossible. Even if you're a Superman, Chances are you couldn't see what is happening on that screen. You wouldn't be able to see the microphone bouncing. You probably wouldn't be able to see the little red dot in the corner to see if it's actually recording or not, which is pretty darn important. But with the L monitor or L master, L master, that's why I couldn't find it before. L master, you run it on your PC, it's a Windows app, and you can see essentially what is on the flippy out screen on a bigger screen, which normally on Lumix G7 cameras, you can do. It didn't work. That was Scottish, just in case you didn't uh, catch that. Ah, Brightex in the house, and Aletta. Bonjourno. Actually, I shouldn't say anything in French. Italian, Spanish. German. German Swedish. Swedish. And other various UK countries, because obviously there's a whole Brexit thing going on, and we're now officially English, United Kingdom-ish, whatever. We're not European. Well, we still are until March, but we're not technically, because we voted out, which is going on far too long, and it's giving me a headache, more so than these damn earphones. Now, don't get me wrong, I like it when a video does well and gets views, but these Nokia's i10s have been an absolute royal pain in the backside. I'm talking full-on preparation H stuff. These things are, Oh, just ridiculous. And I'm not even joking, I am actually getting piles because of these damn things. Someone wanted to know on one of the videos, uh, are they comfortable to wear? So I thought, well, maybe if I stick them up my ass for a bit, I can give you a, a proper genuine answer. But just end up giving me piles. So not only did they give me a headache, they give me piles as well, which sucks. Um, yeah. Basically, the knock is, I'm going to have to go back into it now. Actually, I'm going to have to put my headache glasses on. So these are my headache glasses. They're also my night vision goggles for when I'm driving. Now, actually, these are really cool. These are on Vpon as well. So night vision glasses. Now, everything in here now looks like really super bright, but not glary. So you can actually, it's like, like on a camera, it's going up like a, a couple of stops of uh, aperture so you can actually see things in greater detail without having to squint. They're really good. 
really handy for driving because if I don't know about in your country or wherever you are but at the moment in the UK especially in Bristol they've replaced all the street lights from those nice amber lights which lit up everything to these horrible shitty white LED things which just dazzle the bejesus out of you and if there's any water on the road whatsoever it just reflects exactly the same color as any road markings so if you're in like a dual carriageway or uh, a roundabout you I'll probably might have to explain roundabouts to you Americans because you don't understand it uh, think of it as a traffic circle basically you go around the roundabout and there's exits off of it it's there it's, it's confusing but it makes sense almost but anyway the white light from these horrible LED lights reflects off the the water on the road and of course it's exactly the same color as the white lines that give you the markings so if there's any moisture on the road which hey this is the UK there's moisture on the road pretty much nine days out of every ten so you can't see crap and the fact that it gets dark at about three o'clock in the afternoon so the lights come on school time or evening rush whatever it may be you just can't see the markings on the road and especially when you go around these like three lane things and it's all around a bend and everyone's like well I don't know where the hell actually are the road markings and they've got the <coughs> like stadium lights beating down and you can't see a damn thing so I bought these and now I've got nice orange lights everywhere so I can see the subtle differences between colors and all that kind of stuff they're amazing get one less talking more drinking you lightweight Mike get down your son I will yeah oh someone said have you been to the magic roundabout in Swindon no but I have seen it and that is insane that's like about five or six roundabouts all linked together in a really really small area I'm surprised there's not been many murders there because that looks awful We've been to the Magic Roundabout in Cardiff, which is kind of similar, but it's not as magic. It's ridiculous. It's actually freezing cold in this house. It's freezing cold beer. And I'm actually pretty sure if I had a USB um, dongle now, I could probably hang it on my nipples. It is freezing. I could have a couple of 32 gigs on there and a couple of 64s on there and I'll be ready for all my storage needs. <sighs> Drinking is good, I got my Guinness Extra Stout. Do you know what, I don't think I've ever drank Guinness. Have I ever drank Guinness, Calf? I think you might have tried it once. I don't think I've ever had Guinness. No. I thought it. What does it even taste like? Is it like a beer? Or is it like a malt? It's very thick. I'm confused. Josh Wells hates those slightly raised cars with LED lights. Yeah, what is it with cars? Like all of them, they seem to have those those cheap ass like halogen conversion kits on them, which are obviously not road legal in the UK because the beams all over the place. And they've got them on. They're like a hundred watt LEDs, and they just come towards you, and you're like, ah, I can't see. And you're just praying that you manage to get past them. And then you feel like yours aren't working. Yeah, and then you look on the road, on the floor, on the road in front of your air car, and it's like, are my lights even on? I can't see a thing. Horrendous. Why can't it be daylight more? Like, California, I guess they have sunshine pretty much until, I don't know, 10 o'clock at night. Very strange. Um, oh, excuse me. Right, what was I going to do? What was I going to say? I don't know. Completely lost it completely lost it so what's been going on for you guys this week what have you been playing what have you been watching what have you look been looking forward to brewers droop from whoa, whoa bright tech what the actual are you talking about? you're probably right but don't tell everybody actually this is really cold so i won't get brewers droop but it's kind of it, it, it's, it's a bit of an inny at the moment. <laughs> Got brewer's drink, brewer's shrink. <laughs> Actually, last night, I got into the Christmas spirit and I watched a proper, good old, good old fashioned Christmas movie. Can you guess what that old fashioned Christmas movie was? Answers in the comments section. 
while I think about what the hell I'm doing in my life. Well, what was I doing? I was doing something really important and I've forgotten about it now. Button mushroom syndrome. <laughs> We need a big satellite, like a big mirror, to make it all a sunny all day. Didn't they do that in a film? Wasn't that in, like, Superman 5, The Quest for Peace? And they had Nuclear Man, who was kind of like solar, or something like that. And he got power from the sun, and they had a big mirror. Or did I dream that? I probably dreamt it. I do have some vivid dreams. Big mirror daylight saving. Yeah, that's what we'd have, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we'd have a new time zone, mirror saving time. Or mo mirror. Oh, my phone's verping now. What's going on now? Nokia 8. Working now. I'm really pleased with that. Here's a thing of beauty. That's cost me. How much did it cost me? <laughs> 50 quid. Plus the screen, which is number 35-ish, 85 pounds for what was essentially a flagship phone last year, maybe a year hours. before. And? At least 10 hairs. 10 hairs? That's your ex. What is that? Changing the screen. Oh yeah, changing the screen was a pain in that. <whistles> There's gum around the outside edges of these phones, like sticky gum. So you think, obviously, when you're taking the old glass out, heat it up and what have you, then scrape away the old glue so when you get the new, nice new screen, the adhesive will sit on there nice and flush. What does the new screen not come with? Uh, answers on a postcard. Yes, obviously it comes with no freaking glue. So I had to put it on with a bit of super glue, which is not great, but it works and look, it don't fall out. If it did fall out then I would be upset, but it didn't, so I'm not. So that's all good. Aletta prefers the dark and she avoids the sun at all costs. Now, that used to be a thing. That I used to say I look better in the dark. Or did Kath used to say that to me? I can't remember. Yeah, Kath used to say it to me. <laughs> or did I say it to you? It's UB40. Oh, yeah, it's UB40. It's close. I must have dreamt that as well. Oh yeah, the Chinese are making that massive mirror, aren't they, to, uh, to direct sunlight to China. That's a real item there. Can't believe they're actually doing that. Do you reckon they will? This one of those like, April Fool's jokes, isn't it? I bet they can't do that. That would be pretty cool, though. Imagine what it'd be like for plants and stuff, and farmers. You'd always have sunshine. And so lucky. Yeah, solar panels and all that. They'd make an absolute fortune. They'd be like, ching, 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 all the money flying in. Do they have fields everywhere, like cars? Yeah, they, yeah, solar fields are everywhere, aren't they? Well, apart from Antarctic, I can't imagine they'd do very well there. They might do, though. Who knows? So nobody's guessed yet the, um, the Christmas film I watched. It was that good old-fashioned classic, Die Hard. What a Christmas movie that is. Now, a lot of people say that it's not a Christmas movie. Now, the fact that it is John McClane going to see his family for Christmas and ends up at a Christmas party at the Tamagotchi headquarters or wherever the heck it is, that to me says it's a Christmas movie. It's set at Christmas, it's at a Christmas party. I think it was actually released around Christmas time. It's a Christmas movie. Just because it hasn't got Santa Claus in it or family values of some sort, then I don't like it. Yeah, Bright Tech, I like Die Hard. You also like, um, what's that one with Mason? What's the other one? Nativity. Oh, well, yeah, the Nativity's good as well. If you like a bit of comedy, then Nativity's good. And what's the other thing? Mr. F the Smelly Man. What's the Smelly Man? Mr. David Williams. David Williams' song, uh, thing. Story. Story. I can't think of what it is now. Mr. Stink. <coughs> I think that's it, Mr. Stink. It's cool. Gremlins. Gremlins is a great Christmas movie. And again, that essentially isn't about Christmas, 
but it is set at Christmas time. Oh, Gremlins, what a great film for Christmas. So that's what we need to do. We need to create a alternative list of Christmas films. Because what is a real Christmas film? What would you consider a real Christmas film that me and Mrs. C should be watching this year? I can't think of any. Um, I think there's one called It's a Wonderful Life. Never seen it. Got no intentions of watching it. They can shove it right up your ass. The Snowman, I've not seen that. That's technically a Christmas movie, I guess. What else is there? What is a proper old-fashioned Christmas movie? I can't think of any others. Wizard of Oz, not really Christmassy. But it's always on at Christmas. <laughs> He's Alan Rickman, he is dead. He was a great actor, but if you watch Die Hard again and watch Alan Rickman in it, his acting is, I don't know whether it's intentionally crap, but it is crap. You watch the first bits and he, he, the way he just looks at the camera and interacts with people, maybe it's the script, but yeah, he just comes across as a bit too kind of theatrical, if that is a thing. But he was a good actor, but a little bit theatrical. So come on people, tell me, what is a Christmas movie? A Charlie Brown Christmas. It was sweet and depressing. Well, that sounds Christmassy. Christmas is pretty depressing, isn't it? Let's be fair. Bad Santa, Bad, yeah, Bad Santa and Bad Santa 2, both of those were fantastic. But again, not traditional Christmas movies. Uh, what was the other one? There was, um, there was a recent one with... Red Moms. Is it Bad Boss? No. What was the one where Bad Moms. Jason Bateman was in it, I think, and... Oh, what was the name? Uh, Jennifer Aniston. And they have like some weird office party to try and boost the business or to get a contract. That's Christmassy, I think. Can't think what it is. Maybe it was Bad Boss. Something like that. Scrooged. Never watched Scrooged. That is a proper Christmas movie, I guess. With uh, Bill Murray. I haven't watched it. Probably is pretty good though. I like Bill Murray stuff. Groundhog Day is a classic. Which Groundhog Day is kind of Christmassy because it's wintry and then there's snow and stuff. Scrooge, yeah, we're gonna have to watch that like, Jingle All The Way. What is that? Jingle All The Way, calf? Do you know what that is? Not a clue. Lampoons, National it. Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Is, is it vacation? Yeah. National Lampoon's Christmas is probably one of the best Christmas films ever. Especially when he puts all the lights up. That is just classic. Um, when he puts the lights on super bright and the neighbours get blinded and fall over and wreck their house. Absolutely classic. What neighbours cousin? Family. Oh, my thing's gone wrong again. It's all broken. So I suppose really we should be talking about technology news, but has there been any technology news this week? We've had a few leaks from AMD about the new 3000 series or Ryzen 2, or whatever they want to call it. Oh, I've broken my thing now. Where's the bloody chat thing? Oh, I don't know. Help me out. It's all getting too much for me. Any ideas, Calf? Where's, hey, restore chat, that's the one. <sighs> Bloody hell, it's hard work. Home Alone. Now Home Alone, yeah, that is a great Christmas movie. But it's not Christmassy in the true sense of a Christmas movie, is it really? I don't know, well it is, but it isn't. It's set at Christmas. But what are the, what are the kind of the classic Christmas movies? I suppose that Home Alone is now, because it's getting on a bit. Yeah, a lot of Christmas movies. Hi Ollie, how you doing? Now, before I started this cluster of a stream tonight, um, me and Kath were working on a project. Now, the project involved are 
LED cheapo party light, which we bought from Vipon, which was less than five pounds. Now you look at that box and you think to yourself, yeah, that's gonna be crap. You can tell, look at the remote control. The remote control is probably cost all of about three pence to make. And that's including the battery. Like using like top technology in a London hospital. Yeah, this, this is like proper state of the art stuff. You can tell that actually says LED on it, which means, well actually it's just, LED is actually written in red, green and blue. Don't know if you can see that. So it should actually say RGB rather than LED, but you get the idea. Anyway, so in conjunction with the party light and the Hive Active plug, which works with the rest of the Hive Active heating system, we used the IFTTT I -F -T -T -T, to create a little applet or program. So whenever we get a super chat, the LED or the glitter ball thing will turn on for 30 seconds. I did try and do it or I was looking to do it so that it come on and actually played some music at the same time. But what with copyright issues and copyright strikes and all that kind of crap, that has gone on the back burner. But I think there still is possibly a way of doing it, but I cannot work out how. So in theory now, when I get a super chat, that light should come on which will alert me to super chat questions. So we'll see if that works one day. It doesn't seem to actually work when I test it, but you never know. Um, Brightex got about 10 of them from his Amazon review days. <laughs> hmm? Is there a certain thing for Amazon where they assemble? Yeah, they used to do it. Yeah, we actually paid for it. Actually, I'll show you what it's like. It is actually pretty good. Go to Josh Wells first. Oh, Josh Wells. Calf says i got to speak to Josh Wells. I used to use AMD all the time when I moved to Intel. AMD never... When I moved to Intel... Hang on, I'm confused. I used to use AMD all the time, then I moved to Intel. AMD never looked back. Is that supposed to be Anne's never looked back? Um. I'm confused. So do you still use Intel or are you now AMD through and through? I'm actually AMD all the way through. If you cut me in half like a stick of rock, it actually says advanced micro devices right through the middle. Which still impresses me even to today. Any UK websites you can get these from? Uh, what, the lights? These? Is that the thing? Or are you on about these things? Those? I don't know, I'm confused. What's going on? That one's still open. I use Intel all the way through. Josh, you must have a lot of money. I can't afford to buy Intel. Especially when I've got CAF's computer, my computer, the streaming computer, the media center computer, George's computer, Angel's computer, probably another computer sticking around. I don't think there's an Intel processor in the house. Oh, hang on. Yeah, Surface Pro's got one. Annette said, I've used at least half of the rumours about Ryzen are true. I hope that half of the rumours about Ryzen are true also. It would be very good. I'm interested to see what the... Well, actually, no, I'm not. The... I'm still really... really weirded out by the whole APU thing. Like the 2200G, the 200G the new 3300G, 300G, all of the ones with the integrated um, Vega graphics. It's a good idea, but I still really don't get where it fits into the market. Now there's been um, someone I talk to relatively, well almost daily actually on Facebook Messenger um, about a system that he's been building. And he went for a 2400G which is about 130, 140 pounds in the UK. So that is not a million miles off the price of a Ryzen 7 1700, which you can pick up for about 150 at the moment. So about 10, 15 pounds more um, for another four cores and another eight threads 
and arguably a, uh, a better overclocking processor. Now, if you're not gonna go for a graphics card, then the G-Series does make sense. But he's now gone out and got a 1050 Ti, which is kind of like a, a, a lower end graphics card. So any of the benefits that that CPU or APU had are now completely obsolete because he's replaced it with a graphics card. So that is a very much a, a common thing, I think, which most people, when they're building a system, initially you look at the prices, and yeah, if you can't afford a graphics card when you're doing your build, I, I completely get it. But to spend an extra, I don't know, what's the competitor, a Ryzen 5, probably a Ryzen 5 1400 maybe against the 2400G, I guess that would be a, a fair a fair comparison. You can pick one of those up for about 100, 105 pounds. So you'd save probably 30 or 40, which you could put towards a graphics card. Is it worth spending that extra 30 or 40 pounds to get onboard graphics and then have to probably upgrade your processor later when it runs out of cores? I don't know. It's a, it's a really, really odd position. And I, when I bought the 2200G, I thought to myself, I don't really see where this is going. I get it. And I bought it because I was intrigued by it and I wanted to see what I could get out of it. But even even now, it's in Calf's computer over there and she's got a Radeon graphics card in there now. So the extra benefit of that onboard GPU is completely wasted. There's only one monitor on that computer. So it's absolutely pointless. So could have quite easily got away with probably spending a few extra pounds and getting a better Ryzen 5 with more cores and more threads. Just yeah to know any UK name legit websites you can buy the items from? Any UK name legit... Ooh. Really nice to say, they're all different though. Yeah, um, just to answer that from just Jacob, or Jacob, whatever. Are there any legit websites you can buy the items from? The items, I can only say the only place I know this legit is knockies.com. Now they're not UK, they're based in um, Arizona, in, the, in America, we believe, that's where their distribution center is. I've spoken to them directly, personally, and through the website. They seem genuine. We've had stuff come through from them, we've reviewed it. They've always answered questions and they've always been really good to us. And I know a lot of people have bought stuff from Knockies who have had the items delivered with no problems at all. I would say they, they do actually offer free international shipping if you ask for it. There is a code they will give you on checkout so you can get free international shipping. So I can't comment about any of the other sellers and I don't think there is any official companies in the UK yet that sell these. There's a couple of eBay people that do list them but I don't think they're the same ones. So I wouldn't go ahead and say, yeah, get those. They'll be fine because truthfully, I don't know. I can only comment on the ones I bought and the ones I've used, which are the Nokia's ones. So um, I think they took probably five days to arrive, maybe three or four days. I, I'm not entirely sure, but that was before the Christmas rush and they are super, super busy. Lots of people buying them. So I know I would try Nokia's, get into a live chat with them. Say you've seen uh, the Mike's unboxing video and see if you can get an um, international shipping code free of charge or any discounts, which will make up for the price. I don't think the shipping was in that dear anyway. I think it was only a couple of pounds, if that, maybe five pounds. So possibly worth speaking to them on live chat. Hopefully that answers your question. Oh man, my sore testicles. Um, right, sorry, I better go, go read some of these. So, um, a letter is 100% AMD and MSI. Now, funnily enough, I used to be 100% MSI because when I worked for M Squared, M Squared's <coughs> main partner in the UK was MSI from motherboards and graphics cards. So yeah, pretty much everything I had. And in fact, actually most of the things you had in OEM computers from things like Dell, uh, not Dell, Tiny, Time, um, Gateway, stuff like that, they were all MSI boards and they were massive. But they did seem to go through a really crap period, probably the early, 
2000s, maybe late 2000s, where their quality was awful and we had a load of returns. So I kind of lost a bit of faith and I went started going to Asus, which are more expensive, but they do seem to be very reliable. But I would like to get back into some MSI stuff. And I do actually like the MSI Click BIOS on CAF's computer. Is it CAF's? Yeah, CAF's computer's got the MSI board in there. And that MSI BIOS is actually pretty bomb-proof. That was from the... What board was that? That was the AB350M, I think. That was a pretty good board. Uh, yeah, the 1700... I think at the moment the Ryzen 7 1700 is the kind of the perfect balance between price and performance. You can overclock the bejesus out of it to get it up to 1700x and above. And it's in a moment in the UK, 140 pounds or 145 pounds, which is which is brilliant, really. They started out at what 299 or 279, just so like half the original retail price, and they're what two years old, if that, and still have a shitload of cores. <laughs> Ollie man, Ollie man, is that actually for, to me? Isn't it? You're like the English Linus Tech Tips with less subs. <laughs> uh, and it's getting even worse today, and I don't know if Brightex noticed it. The, um, today, well, the last couple of days, YouTube's been having a clear out, their annual clear out. So if you've got any subscribers which are part of kind of like sub to sub groups or um, deleted accounts which haven't come off, that sort of thing, today and yesterday were the kind of days where you lose all your subs. So we've taken a little bit of a hit which it wasn't a massive hit, but it was weird this morning to come down and look at the kind of the stats and go, oh, great, I've got minus six subscribers today. Awesome, that works out really nicely for the weekend. So that was, uh, but we did hit our goal. yeah, we still hit our goal. We got our 6,000 subs, which we plan to get for the end of January. So we're already at 6,100, I think almost. Mm -hmm. So we might even get 7,000 by the time that we get to January 20th, which is our kind of anniversary. So, yeah, we're doing all right. We haven't got many subs, but we're growing slowly but surely. And, we're, yeah, we're on that trajectory. It's going... <whistles> give it about 25, 30 years, and we'll be doing great. I might be a bit dead, or maybe kind of you have to wheel me out every now and then and dust me off, but yeah, it'll be good. <laughs> Brightech lost a few thousand. Holy shit. That is not bad. Uh, not good. I mean, you know what I mean? That's awful. I let a, I'd get a 2200G if I was going to build a PC just for writing and surfing the web. Yeah, I think that is it. If you're for system integrators or if you're building a cheap PC for someone, then those APU systems are going to be like super, super awesome. Um, yeah. <laughs> What? What am I? Caps going? What? 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 What am I looking at? Egghead. Yay! Thanks for that. I think. <laughs> oh, sorry. You should have uh, sent a super chat. I would have got a notification then. I would have looked at it straight away. Not that I'm whoring for super chats much. Maybe this little smidge. Um, will they be here for Christmas? I don't know. That is a, a difficult question. I am not, um, I don't work for Nokia's. I'm not kind of affiliated like that. So truthfully, I don't know. But if you go to their site, they are in, I think they're in America time. So over there, I think it's probably what, mid afternoon right now, maybe early afternoon, mid afternoon, whatever. So they should be there to take a live chat with you so you can discuss it and ask the questions. So that should answer your questions. They, they will be able to answer it. A lot better and a lot more kind of officially than I can. Uh, yeah. All right, now Ollie Man was saying to Brightech, he's like Linus Tech Tips with less subscribers. <laughs> I think I don't know. I'm getting confused. I don't care. If it means anything, I quite like Linus. I like his squeaky voice and I like his sandals and socks. I like that whole thing that he actually doesn't give a rat's ass. 
He just does what he wants to do. If you like it, great. If you don't... I could say I like the colour of his car. Calf likes the colour of his car. Uh, Brightech, when the MSI motherboards were red, they used to be real bad. Yeah, that was actually a thing, because I remember they did the... I'm trying to think of the model number. I think it was the MS7360, which I think was a, a Enforce 2 based board, which is going back a bit, which used the uh, older Athlons, or no, XP chips that would have been. Yeah, Athlon XPs, and those were red, and they were bloody awful, absolutely horrendous. And they even had those red LEDs on there the, to tell you the kind of the D LED, I think they called them, for, for debugging, which they've started doing on some of the newer boards actually. So it would light up RAM, CPU, VGA, post, and that sort of thing. They were bloody awful, bloody awful. Hmm. Oh, cool. <laughs> so, um, Ollie Man, how many Coca Cola cans do you need? All of them. Of course, why do you squint every time you look at the chant? Because this screen is like a 2K dis display, but it's like 10 inches, so the text is super small and I should have changed it really, or I should have just put my glasses on, that'd be easier, but actually. Nope, that doesn't help either. We should get monetized for promoting Linus's channel. Yeah, that's a bloody good idea. Could do with some of his cash. I would like to have the sort of money they have, so you can just go onto Amazon and just buy a load of crap, just to sort of show people how bad it is. Very bizarre. Amazon, Amazon uh, Basics, they did a video of. And they just bought all sorts of crap, which they didn't obviously need. They even bought a, a PC power cable, like the Kettle Lead, which most people have got at least 20 or so at home somewhere. And also they like to make a really big deal when they buy things themselves. Yes, and they do like to make a big deal of things when they buy things themselves out of their own money. i noticed that a lot recently. All the YouTube channels, the bigger ones, they're like, well, I bought this out of my own money. It's like, yeah, that's like what everybody has to do. It's not like you're gifted because you're spending your own money. What do you expect? Very bizarre. Which is, I think, is the big difference between they get all this, like, crazy stuff sent to them, which is okay. But for real people like us who actually got to go out to work and earn the money to buy this stuff, why, why bother? Ridiculous. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, that's uh, that's kind of what really gets me. The channels are entertaining, don't get me wrong, but like Jay's Two Cents, a lot of the stuff, you look at his shelves that he's got behind him, and it's just like racks and racks of GPUs and motherboards and stuff that he gets sent. And if you get sent it for review, fine, you review it, you send it back. But he keeps all that stuff. So when he says, oh, I've got to build a system, oh, I'm going to go to Fry's or Best Buy and I'm going to buy it out of my own money. It's like, why are you even bothering? You've got all that stuff there. Just use it. Don't be a dick. Or get rid of some of that stuff. Give it away to your subscribers. Why do you need to keep all that stuff? You don't. Give it away to people. Give something back. I, let, uh, I lost the stream for a minute. Their internet is crap. I had to drop down to 240p, which is probably good because I probably look a lot better in 240p. I think Tony had to do that last week, didn't he? Yeah, Tony had to do the same last week. And I think he did say that I actually did look better. <coughs> so no one's going to do the old, the honours. Actually, this thing may not be working. So I'm going to put the disco ball on, being it is Christmas. Oh, go on then. Kath's going to do it. She's going to try it out and see if it works. Yeah, I'm. You're fuzzier at 240p. That's probably a good thing. Yeah, Brightex the same. Like the channel, like that um, Zotac box I reviewed this week. 
it's a loan. I've got to give it back. It's not as like they've said to me, oh, Mike, do a good review for us and you can keep the computer. That isn't how it works, especially for like low-end YouTubers like me. Everything that you review, you've either got to go and buy for yourself and use or you've got to be really super lucky and someone actually that you know buy one so you can quickly say, look, do you mind if I unbox that before you use it? Which I had to do with my iPhone X video. I can't afford an iPhone X. Jesus, it's like a thousand pounds. So luckily someone I worked with had one. And they're like, oh, do you want to unbox it? It's like, yes, thank you. It was a crap video. <laughs> no one watched it, but if I'd have spent a thousand pounds on it, I'd have been really, really pissed off. Anyway, I digress. So, what else, was I, uh, what else is this week? Graphics cards. I still don't get this RX 590. I really don't get it. Is it anyone out there actually bought one? Or are they selling? I just don't get it. It's a lot of money for a graphics card, which isn't really a big jump up from the 580. It is essentially a, re a rebadge. Really don't get it. Hold the line caller. K capital. I'm getting a sore throat. I'm not drinking enough. <laughs> I just seen that there's a quite a big delay on this video stream. It must be about 30 seconds or so. So I've just seen myself pick up my empty can. That was funny. So what I was saying, yeah, graphics cards. I really don't get graphics cards, and I, I bought a GTX 1070, okay, which is a really expensive graphics card, really. If, if you're a normal person, it's an expensive graphics card. It's like 300 pounds. So I really don't see a massive jump in performance between that and my GTX 970. Now, I know you probably shouldn't, and I kind of didn't, but you do expect something. I remember back in the days when um, when you'd go out and buy a graphics card, like if you went from a, I don't know, an ATI all-in-wonder card, and then you went out and bought a Voodoo 3DFX card, you put it in, you'd fire up a game, and you'd be like, whoa, holy shit, what is going on? That is insane. Whereas now, you go out and buy a graphics card and you like you install the drivers and you start running the game and it's not until you actually run a benchmark and you're like, oh yeah, yeah, that's like 10% faster. Why? Why are we even doing it? What is the point? It is absolutely ridiculous. But I think because of the whole kind of YouTube thing and all the stuff that we watch and all the stuff, the news, and it's such a fast moving turnover, that these new products get released all the time. Bang, 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 new product, new product, new product, new product. And it's like, just leave a bigger gap, but actually make some improvements. You don't need to have a yearly release cycle or a six monthly re release cycle. Intel have done the same thing and AMD pretty much now. Although AMD did it right because they went from those FX processors, they didn't release anything for ages, nearly I don't know, eight years or whatever it was, and then come out with the Ryzen's and they're like, yes, that is a noticeable jump, a big jump, a worthwhile investment. But graphics card wise, it's just not having it. Not having it at all. Should try again, it didn't seem to work. Okay. Did I come up with it? No. So I don't know. Oh, I'll try to see what's that. We'll get... Yeah, a lot of big channels get harder. Yeah, that's the is you do the same yeah, we do the same stuff. It's, um, product reviews are, way it worked. Do, 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 disco. So my IFTTT actually did work. Sorry to interrupt that, but that's cool. So I received the super chat from CAF for 199, you cheapskate. And that's probably out of my account. <laughs> 
But there, that should stay on now for 30 seconds. That's pretty cool. And look at, hey, it's classic. How cool is that? I like that, I'm impressed. Some things are really crap, but impress me. And actually, that, despite all the Super Chat stuff, that little RGB light bulb, for less than four uh, less than five pounds, that's probably one of the best purchases I've made this year, which is really sad. Brightex got ten free. But Brightex had a load of them dotted around. You could have bought some. I could have bought one off you. Could have given away to your subscribers. I'd have had one. <laughs> but I've got a remote control here. Does that still work now? No, because it's off, isn't it? But yeah, that's cool. Five pounds, less than five pounds. And I, I kind of ordered it yesterday, thinking, oh, I'll just do it. And then I'll cancel the order, but because stuff from Amazon comes so quickly, kind of you can't really cancel it quick enough. Bizarre. Anyway, so actually, yeah, Brightex said that the RX 480 is the same as the 580, there's no difference. And I totally agree. In CAF's computer, there's an RX 480. In that computer, there's a 580. There's a 970 knocking around and my 1070. And I gotta be honest with you, I find it very difficult to find the difference between them. <coughs> oh dear, excuse me. Damn, beer's gonna kill me. Um, yeah, I don't find, there's not a massive difference between them. If you're playing it, playing the games at normal resolutions, or if you just put on auto, so you can't tell what actually has been changed, you'd struggle to notice a difference between them. Which is sad, really because the RX 480 is probably worth about 100 pounds. The seven, the GTX 970 is probably about the same, 100, 120. The 580 is probably worth about 140, and the 1070 is worth probably 200. So it's ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. So Aletta's got a Sapphire Nitro Plus 590, and it only costs 229 USD, which actually, that's a really good price for that, because I think the 5.8 is new, or probably around about that price, aren't they? Not a lot off. And the Sapphire cards, generally, of all of them, the Sapphires are kind of like the the cream of the crop. Because I don't think Asus actually make... Yeah, they do, don't they? Yeah, Sapphire is almost like a, a AMD board partner, isn't it, I think, of some sort. I just got distracted there. Companies like Banggood and Gearbest send tons of free samples for reviews and that chokes up the YouTube search. I do full product reviews and get buried by some kid doing an unboxing. Sorry, I do apologize. But thanks for calling me a kid. <laughs> Appreciate it. But going back to the site, actually a letter with your Nitro Plus 590, is that the, the kind of the, it's got a, like a blue shroud on it and blue LEDs on the fans? So I think I did see that. Oh, I, so you got $50 off for getting an Amazon credit card. I've been really tempted to get an Amazon credit card, but they don't do Amazon groceries here in Bristol in the UK yet. But as soon as they do, literally I will never have to leave the house again. Apart from maybe to go to the post office to send stuff back. It's blue, it matches the system. Awesome. I'm still umming and iron about getting the uh, the Cooler Master H500P, the perforated one. I'm, I am. I'm still. I want to do it, but I'm still trying to justify it to myself. And also, I don't think it will fit on the shelf behind me. It might do. I don't know. I bought some lottery tickets today, so if I uh, if I do well on the lottery, then I might treat myself to uh, some new stuff. I do need to sell some computer stuff, really, because it's getting a bit much. I really don't, you know what it's like, I have this channel because I like keeping things nice and cheap and nice and simple. I don't really like to waste money. Like, I buy all these things in, and you might think it's a waste of money, or like, how many pairs of Bluetooth headphones can you wear? But the thing is, these are all gonna be Christmas presents for people, so it's kind of, I've spent money on a Christmas present for someone which I've unboxed already, but put back really neatly and actually made sure it worked, so. 
they're quids in, no Christmas returns because it all works. But that's the thing, trying to, trying to actually keep track of money and do PC stuff is so, so difficult. Especially when you think, like, I've got that transparent PC case, which I desperately want to do something with, but I'm like, what do I do with it? It's going to involve me spending money somewhere along the line. And it really kills me to have to spend money when there's so much computer stuff in the house that I could probably take something out of something and change it all around. But what do I do? I don't like spending money, I really don't. Brightek, the RX 578 gig, 158.99. They're actually, I don't know what it's like in the, in the US at the moment or around the world, but there seems to be a lot of mining cards coming onto the market now. I'm in a, a PC gaming group in uh, Bristol on Facebook and there's like floods of them. There's guys coming on selling like five, 10 cards at a time all at really good prices, but are mining cards worth it? I'm in a real kind of quandary about that because mining cards have probably been better looked after and have probably had less thermal cycling than someone who's used a card for gaming and who's kind of overclocked the video card to some crazy level to try and squeeze a few more frames per second out of Fortnite. And you know what it's like, get people have cards they're in a PC which is choked of airflow, all that kind of stuff. So actually, are you better off buying a mining card? Because at least the miners are taking care of it. They've probably undervolted it to keep the money down because obviously money spent on electricity is money wasted as far as mining is concerned. So undervolt the card, keep the card nice and cool, cool. so it can, uh, can self-clock itself higher to get more uh, hashes per second or per minute or whatever. So actually, is a mining card a better way to go if, it, if it's been looked after? I, I don't know, I, I see a lot of these videos on YouTube again where people are kind of scaremongering, like don't buy these mining cards. And actually, it's like, well, I don't know, maybe they are the better option, especially seeing as someone's probably bought them, probably four or five of them, has put them all in a machine, just left it running away, it's probably only ever been turned off about five or six times when they've updated the firmware or changed the program or something, or they've lost power. So it's not had that many thermal cycles, which, and also kept cool as well, because generally people tend to keep those kind of rigs cool. I don't know. Oh dear. Oh, back plates. It didn't have a back plate. Was that a graphics card without a back plate? I'm confused. That's, I'm, I'm confused. Is someone saying, are you saying that graphics cards don't have a back plate? Am I right in reading that? Oh, actually, when you, yeah, back plate. Do you mean like the, the one that goes on the top or the one where the kind of the ports are? I'm really confused then. Confused, I'm really confused. Oh, what's it, yeah, we didn't call it, do we call it back plate? I suppose it is a back plate. There is something else we call it. <clears throat> and uh, the metal bit on there. That's the, a back plate, isn't it? I was thinking of that being a back plate, which it kind of is, because it's at the back of the computer. But that is on the back of the card. That is actually a, a real sexy back plate, the uh, EVGA. I have a close up. Happy days. I love that card. That's probably been one of the best cards I've ever bought. I picked that up for, well, a lot, lot less than what it should have been. I've had that about two years now, maybe even slightly more. But that was a great card. And it still performs really well now. 
but I replaced it for the 1070, which I kind of regret, but hey ho, some you win. Right, I think that is pretty much going to wrap things up for tonight. It's not really been any real massive breakthroughs tech news wise. I suppose we're going to have to wait for CES and all that kind of stuff and all these new Ryzen chips, which will hopefully be uh, announced, if not released. Now, they ha there have been some benchmarks released or leaked. I think it was yesterday for the, the 3000 series. I must admit, I didn't have a great look into it because, well, I didn't have time. But from what I can tell, they look really good, really fast, really low voltage, and a really good IPC. So hopefully that will be something that we see come in sooner rather than later. Although at the moment, Intel are probably, Intel aren't doing great, AMD are doing better. I really want to see some really good AMD graphics cards. That's what we really need. Something around the kind of $150 to $200 mark, which performs as well as the Vega 56, maybe slightly more. And I think they'd have a real winner on their hands, but it seems to be all these kind of 480s, 570s, 580s, 590s, Vega 56, Vega 64s, a lot of them still on the market. And I guess until they're sold off, then there's no reason for AMD to do anything, which is sad. But so the longer we give them, hopefully, fingers crossed, they will deliver something awesome, which would be good. So that's pretty much wrapped up. Um, thanks everyone for tuning in and your comments, suggestions, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, hopefully, we'll be back on. When are we back on, Calf? Next next Saturday. Yeah, we'll be back next Saturday, which will be the 22nd, which will be our last stream of before Christmas, actually. So think about your Christmas movies. And on the Saturday stream, if you can join us around about the same time, 10 o'clock, make sure you've got your Christmas hats on and Christmas jumpers. And if you send me pictures of them on Discord, we will display them so we can rate your jumper. I'll possibly be wearing mine. Although it's so cold at the moment, I think I'm just going to have a red nose and be done with it. So anyway, thanks for watching and we'll catch you again next week. Speak to you later.